Good morning. Welcome to Subramani.com. I did one post uh, vlog uh, where I spoke about a couple saying this couple can never get rich. Now I am doing another post saying how this couple will become just a sec. How this couple will become very rich. So normally I don't like to write, talk about negative things because it's very difficult or very bad for me to say this couple will never get rich and it's always nice to say this couple will get rich. So here I just passed by, this is a 4-5 year old story when somebody had come to me for a portfolio review, given a choice I don't like to do it, I do it now only under tremendous force because I'm not uh, keen to do it. So here is uh, another young couple. Uh, who came, let, uh, let me be very frank, blunt, came with uh, platinum spoons. They were born with platinum spoons. So it was not that they had to start from scratch. They were in their 30s and, uh, well, 32, 33 maybe. So they were still, uh, they were school uh, good sweethearts who knew each other, families knew each other. So uh, they were married for three, four years now. They must have been 31, 32 which was the same age of the previous couple in the previous vlog also, please have a look at that too. First of all, to get rich, they had one advantage. Both came from business families. Both came from, uh, so both were sobo kids. Uh, both came with a reasonable amount of uh, capital to start with. Their parents had done the uh, lot of rich dad activities for both of them which means when the kids were in the womb, their PPF account was already opened and somebody was putting in 5,000, 10,000 a year, whatever, right? So those things had already been done. So none of the base building had to be done. These kids came with a base. Perhaps they would have even inherited, they would have enough money to buy a house without having taken up a job. That much wealth was created for them. And I'm not talking of any house. I'm talking of a house in South Bombay. So that's the kind of money that they already had. Given the background, the question is, will they get richer? Will they create more value from here? <clears throat> well, when you start off with an advantage, you should do nothing to uh, fritter it away. I'm not saying you have to invest in an index fund, etc., etc. No, you can afford to take chances. You can go and build an app and perhaps become a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, right? You can do those kind of things. So that choice they had. Both of them were very mobile and willing to look at working abroad. Both of them were not interested in joining the family business. That was an option available to both of them. Uh, the girl was the one among two girls and so somebody in the family had to step in. So either she could have stepped in or her husband could have stepped in. Right? But both the girls, uh, both those girls were professionally qualified. This boy was also professionally qualified. They had some of the best branded education, so that was another start and most importantly, both were mobile. Both were willing to move to any part of the world to get a better uh, career opportunity. And uh, with all this, their standard of living was not too high. Yes, of course, they had a car, but they had a very simple car, very base kind of a car, not more than 10 lakhs for sure, right? That kind of a car and car had running, but they would not hesitate at all in taking a train or a bus or things like that. They were brought up with very good middle class values. Of course, they were middle class at some point in time when they would have had a net worth of a crore or something. But uh, yeah, by the time these kids hit big time, they were not uh, middle class. They were rich, uh, super upper middle class. They. <clears throat> they had both bought a flat each, a flat in which they would never live, but they were paying an EMI more because they were getting income tax deduction much before this cap of 2 lakhs came. So it was a pure tax decision of why they bought a house. So now they were more keen to sell it off saying now that the tax rebate is not there, we should not, uh, the leveraging is not working, right? Negative leveraging is what we call it. Negative leveraging doesn't work when there is a cap by the government on how much interest you can claim as a deduction. So without negative leveraging, they were happy to get uh, rid of it. They did get married in a reasonable style. They shared the expenses or rather the parents shared the expenses. They did go for a vacation to Switzerland. Uh, they w went for their honeymoon, they went to Europe 
where they stayed a uh, long time in Switzerland. Yes, they did all that, but most of their uh, vacations are India-oriented uh, vacations. They would go to a, a Tadoba, a Kaziranga, more uh, you know animal-oriented destinations rather than uh, <coughs> they didn't want to see all of Africa and uh, Europe and US and all that. Yes, they had done it, but it, they were not obsessed about it. So no big great expense no big great hobby they were not people who were even eating out so the only thing that they could have spent money with this kind of money is perhaps eating out that was not there both of them had very simple hobbies uh, they were both into swimming both into cycling both into running you know so those were all those are not expensive hobbies right i mean flying could be an expensive hobby but there are no expensive hobbies no expensive fancy racing cars nothing of that sort their attire was nice but you really it didn't uh, look like it, it was not money dripping out of their dress the dresses were decent they were bought in good shops and uh, but they were not at all brand conscious which is very surprising yes for this young couple but they were not they had started sips and they were creating wealth but they were also in touch with their family broker and they were buying and selling equity and it was not being done very intelligently so i could add some value there and i could change some of the sips they were doing too many sips i concentrated it and uh, i also feel that they needed to keep a little bit of cash surplus available in case one of them decides to take the entrepreneurial route because both have uh, hobbies which could make uh, careers like she could always have taken to painting she could have taken to sculpturing she was good at both but i have no clue whether she would do it but yeah he could have left and started some business of his own he could join his father's business if he joining his father's business he didn't need cash but he was not so oriented towards that he was a techie so he was he would have perhaps gone and started a software company so some cash was needed for that both of them were very realistic about their earning ability both felt that they were terribly overpaid in this market and it could stop any time so that was not giving them a great feeling and therefore they kept exploring jobs abroad and both were working in good companies here so occasionally they would have a saying let's go to canada let's go to usa kind of stuff but that they never followed it up and they were now aging because uh, you don't really go out at 40 but now they still had next two three years but i don't i'm not very sure whether they would consider because both are going to inherit a lot of money in india so from a money point of view it didn't make too much sense for them to go from a career point of view yes if you like the job there if you like the working conditions there and they had gone abroad right so they had seen all that so they had not borrowed for uh, anything ever except for a house car was largely funded by friends relatives gifts kind of thing both parents chipping in and said don't borrow for a car so which means they had no borrowing but both the boy and the girl were willing to consider borrowing against their equity to buy more equity they were willing to take a calculated leveraged risk but in their families borrowing was considered to be a no no so the parents were pressurizing them into saying sell off that flat buy another flat in which you can really live and we will fund you don't borrow but nothing was happening on that count but yes their sips were doing well their direct equity was doing well but their direct equity was a little bit of a mess because it had too many uh, too many stocks first to start with and so it was not a very concentrated portfolio the parents had good concentrated portfolios and these kids had not copied from them so i changed them Uh, from the online broking to the offline broking of their father's uh, broker and i said you will buy only through him you will sell only through him yes the brokerage is a little higher but that guy's worth his weight in gold so some of these tinkering which i did some of the changes which i made for 4 5 years ago recently i spoke to them and they seem to be on the path i look at this couple and i feel they're rich of course they're rich there's no doubt about that reasonably rich nahi kafi rich they should be having Uh, net worth in the region of 25 crores now include i'm talking of family net worth so they are not definitely poor by any standards both of them have got good qualifications both have got um, salary in the uh, almost touching a crore 
uh, or slightly lesser maybe but yeah both of them are extremely well paid both of them are doing very well both of them are trying to go abroad the whole rich attitude or wealthy attitude saying my ability to earn has nothing to do with my need to spend right the complete disconnect this is a great route to uh, greater prosperity but of course uh, i know there'll be critics who say they have anyway started with a platinum spoon maybe not platinum gold spoon yes they didn't have to provide for any of the they didn't have to pay their father's debt and they didn't have to support anybody so yes some people get lucky so yes but this couple is on its way to the 100 crore mark for sure thank you